Hey, Christian with Tune Outdoor. Uh, I want to do a more in-depth walkthrough of our propane tank mount and some of the designs we put in to make your M1 as functional as possible. So as I've mentioned in previous uh, videos, it is capable of holding either a 5 or a 10 pound tank in the same product. We don't have two different products for that. So if you ever want to upgrade from a 5 pound tank to a 10 pound tank, all you would do is take a couple of bolts right here and move them up and this whole mount moves up and can accommodate the bigger tank. So depending on what kind of trip you want to take or how much uh, propane you use, if you're running, you know, a cooktop, a water heater, a stove, uh, you may want a bigger tank. So that's uh, just one of the features that we've designed into this. Another one is that we wanted to keep the propane tank as in line with the camper as possible. The reason for this is that the M1 is already a wide camper. If you're, especially if you're on the East Coast for some of those tighter trails, you don't want to add any additional, uh, width to the camper that you don't have to. So when you close the rear door, you know, there's comfortable room for the door to clear the propane tank now. Um, but we didn't leave more room than needed. And that goes for the side as well. This is pretty in line. It sticks maybe a couple inches outside of the total width of the M1. Um, so that was all possible by using uh, some sheet metal brackets up here that just kind of angled everything to keep it parallel with the other. Uh, if we go further, we've got uh, stainless steel uh, straps here, uh, aluminum rivets, aluminum powder coated, uh, sheet metal, uh, over centering latches, uh, with a cotter pin so that that can't come off while you're driving down, traveling down the highway. You can also throw a lock in here if you want to lock up the propane tank mount. Um, and it's in there. It's a pretty, pretty stout, um, fixture. Uh, when you cha chase the propane tank line further, we have this quick disconnect, which is really convenient if you just want to pop that up, uh, fill up your tank. Um, you can also unthread it up here, which you would have to do. Um, so that's pretty much uh, everything. Oh, and of course, we thought we would add a bottle opener, um, which is pretty silly, but uh, it got thrown in there. So if you want to open a bottle, you can pop that open on the bottom of the propane tank mount. So that's it in a nutshell. The next thing I'd like to talk about is how we routed the LP line through the camper. So... It's it's really neat. It just runs up, and then we put a hole in these base bracket covers. We can do this either with a new purchase or retrofit as well. And then the propane tank line actually runs internally through this big base profile. So it's not going to be in the way of your build-out. Uh, it's, it's just really sleek. Uh, and then it pops back up once we get into the uh, base bracket over here, and then it tees off and feeds the uh, Truma. So... It's completely out of the way. You wouldn't even know it's there. Um, so it keeps the uh, simple uh, and functional aesthetic of the M1 intact. I just want to talk real quickly about why we chose the Truma heater itself. Uh, for us being in Colorado, it's not hard to find elevations in excess of 10,000 feet. Uh, there are several mountain passes where you can experience that. Uh, so the last thing you want to do is go on a skiing, you know, mission where you get there at the summit of a mountain and you turn on your heater and it's not operating because it can't breathe and it's a too high of an elevation. So the Truma is, is leading the industry in high elevation output. Uh, so for us, that's just required. Um, but it's also an added benefit to anybody who purchases it because you never know what kind of trip you'll go on in the future. Uh, another misconception about propane heaters is that they cause condensation. So this is true with heaters like Mr. Buddy heaters, where you have an open flame. This works differently. It has a heat exchanger. So that combustion is happening in a closed chamber, and then air is being forced over that hot piece of aluminum and then heating this air. So it's a dry heat, which is really nice and uh, did not cause condensation. If anything, it should help it. All right. Next thing I'd like to talk to you guys about is the Truma thermostat. You may have seen this in some other videos on YouTube of other companies that use Truma, but it is a really nice design. So when you click on this, it just brings the thermostat uh, interface alive, and you can cycle through all the different functionalities, like the fan, the timer, the clock, uh, you know, deeper settings there, and then obviously the, the temperature. 
So there are a lot of cool things you can do with this, like set it to turn on at 6 a.m. right before you wake up to go skiing. If you want to sleep, you know, have a nice cold sleep in a sleeping bag or something like that and also conserve fuel. Um, so that's, that's a really nice functionality. You don't have to get up in the middle of the night to do anything like that. Uh, also, what controls it, just like in your home, is going to be this temperature sensor. So the reason we made this temperature sensor mobile is so that you can actually hook a tube up to the therm uh the Truma heater and run it into your bed platform and this is actually extendable so it comes out and you can put it up in your bed and that way you're only trying to heat that area the tune is a really large camper uh so at night you can end up going through a lot of fuel to warm a space that you're not using so that's just another nice feature to be able to conserve some more fuel the other thing i'd like to talk about is how we settled on choosing this location for the Truma so we went through a bunch of different configurations of mounting in the back of the camper and the front of the camper down low. Uh, and we settled on this because of just the functionality. It's out of the way. If you have a build out, you still have all of this space. Uh, it was the least obtrusive op option we could find. Also, it's centrally located. So your heat is going to be coming out towards the core in the center of the camper. Uh, so that's another, another reason we did it that way. Um, Another reason we did it is because the exhaust tube uh, has a nice exit right through your bulkhead here, and that's also going to be your intake. Truma has a really sleek all-in-one design. The exhaust runs internally through this intake tube. Um, so that vents out through the front of the camper. But the last critical component of the heater system is going to be your power source. So although propane is coming into the Truma heater and combusting, and that's what's creating the heat. It's required that there's electricity to power the fan to force air over that heat exchanger and obviously to power the thermostat. So we use Goal Zero batteries. Um, we've used them for a long time. They've just got good, simple interfaces, but there are a lot of options on the market, uh, you know, from DIY setups using things like Red Arc to other uh, competitors of Goal Zero that can also power your Truma heater. Um, so whatever power option you use, uh, that's going to be a, a critical component. But that's basically it for the entire heater package. Um, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, yeah, we'll see you out there.